We've searched the internet to present you the latest Neuralink-related news. Here's what we found. A Neuralink consultant and Stanford professor, Dr. Krishna Shinoy, gave an excellent presentation in China, and we'll cover highlights of that speech. Then we have a little insight into the progress that Max Hodak is making at his new company, Science. Yuan responded on Twitter to a post on Facebook, or Meta's, ambition to create the metaverse. Then last, there are some sweet things that I and the team have been working on at Neuropod, and we're very excited to share them with you. One of them is a Neuralink and Elon Musk-inspired cartoon series. Okay, gonna interrupt this episode with some news that broke yesterday. Elon was interviewed by the Wall Street Journal, and here's the update he shared with regards to Neuralink. So Neuralink, we um, we, we have uh, Neuralink's working well in um, in monkeys, um, and we were actually doing, doing um, just a, a lot of testing um, and and just confirming that it's it's very safe and reliable, and uh, and that it, the, the Neuralink device can be removed safely. Um, people may have seen the. Uh, demo that we, we, we published uh, earlier this year, the video of a monkey pe- playing uh, the video game Pong uh, telepathically using the Neuralink in its, in its, uh, in its, in its brain. Um, and uh, it's completely wireless, uh, charges inductively. But basically, the monkey looks completely normal and yet is playing a video game telepathically, um, which is, I think, quite, quite profound. Um, we will have, uh, we, we hope to have this in our first humans, which will be uh, people that have um, severe spinal cord injuries, like tetraplegics, quadriplegics, uh, next year, uh, pending uh, FDA approval. And um, and I should say, our, our standards for implanting the device are substantially higher than, than what the FDA requires, um, just as our standards for safety with Tesla are much higher than what uh, uh, the uh, US government requires. Um, and I'll, I'll take a little more than 60 seconds. Yes, I'm about to cut you off. Because I, I think there's, there's something that's, that's, I think, pretty cool. And, and I, I do want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm very, you know, emphasis on cautiously optimistic about this. I think, I think we have a chance with Neuralink of being able to restore uh, full body functionality to someone who has a spinal cord injury. Um, meaning, I think... I think we have a chance, I emphasize a chance of being able to allow someone who um, cannot walk or use their arms uh, to be able to, to walk again, okay. Not naturally. Afterwards, Stock Talk Weekly wrote this on Twitter. Elon Musk says Neuralink plans to implant devices in humans by next year and is cautiously optimistic that they can restore full body functionality for tetraplegics and quadriplegics. Our standards for implanting the devices are higher than what the FDA requires. Elon responded with, I am definitely not saying that we can for sure do this, but I am increasingly confident that it is possible. Additionally, Elon was asked about the timeline for Neuralink to help with memory loss from stroke. He says, replacing faulty or missing neurons with circuits is the right way to think about it. Many problems can be solved by just bridging signals between existing neurons. Progress will accelerate when we have devices in humans. Hard to have nuanced conversations with monkeys next year. And back to the rest of the updates. Next, he is one of the most respected members of the greater BCI community, Dr. Krishna Shinoy. Dr. Shinoy is a professor at Stanford University and a Neuralink consultant. This is a short clip of him speaking at a recent Tencent presentation in China. But it brings to mind what is really a rather age-old idea of asking, can we really listen in on the activity of the brain, as I've been describing, but at new and more powerful ways so that we can ask, well, does he still wish to move his arm? Maybe those signals are just not able to make it down the spinal cord or the wires, if you will, because of the injury. He continues on with a simple explanation of how a Neuralink implant will work. The main takeaways from this presentation were that number one, all these advancements in the brain machine interface space are accelerating, largely because of Neuralink simply existing and bringing more attention to the field. And the primary motivation for the vast majority of people in academia is to solve brain and spine problems, not to have superhuman abilities. Most specifically, Dr. Shinoy was highlighted in a recent MIT Technology Review article that says this about him. He is developing the technology to restore a digital existence to people with the worst afflictions and the most need. 
He also added this when discussing a patient with a brain-computer interface implant, achieving useful mastery of a computer or brain mouse. Quote, Technologically, I see no barrier. I would have not said that 10 years ago, and might not have said it 5 years ago, Shinoy says. It's basically electrodes, chips, and a radio. End quote. Needless to say, these are exciting times for the BCI world. Scrolling down this article, we have a little more insight into Max Hodak's company, Science. The article states this. Hodak says he plans to develop a new type of implant that rests on the retina and can send information to the visual cortex at the back of the brain. Initially, Hodak's new company will be looking to help people like his grandfather, who went blind from retinal diseases. But a medical product is a stocking horse for a bigger ambition, which is to create a device that can produce images in the eyes of healthy people as well. It could just be a computer screen that looks as solid as any ever has, and it's just floating in front of you, he says. When your eyes are open, you would see the world of atoms. When you close your eyes, you see the world of bits. Hodak thinks that in a generation, children will be baffled when we tell them that there used to be just nothing there when we close our eyes. If this work sounds interesting to you, science is looking to hire for many roles, especially embedded software and electrical engineers. In my view, Neuralink's core advantage is and will continue to be hiring. This will then cause the downstream advantages in technical developments. Neuralink is constantly looking to hire the most capable people to fulfill the company mission of solving brain and spine problems. It doesn't matter what age, gender, or race you are. Alongside this, oftentimes the most capable people are actively looking to join Neuralink. Clearly, this is a tremendous advantage that gets amplified over time. I try with these puns, you guys. Secondly, Neuralink operates like a startup. See the picture of the open office here. This is partially due to the company size of around 200 employees and also because it's the most efficient way for teams to work. It's critical that teams can openly talk to one another because they're building devices that have design changes all the time. Likewise, at Tesla, Elon often discusses that one of Tesla's advantages is being able to have teams consider the whole car, rather than just a subsegment of the car. If, for example, you had a team working on the chassis of a car, and then another working on the thermal systems, and another on the skid for the batteries, it'd be very possible to overlook something that's obvious in hindsight. Like, why can't the structure of the car house the batteries rather than having redundant trace? Taking this a step further, as we've seen over the past year, global labor shortages in every industry are handicapping companies of every size. Yet SpaceX and Tesla remain at the top of the list of companies that new engineering graduates want to work at. I suspect that labor shortages will continue for a minimum of more than two decades. So the ability for Neuralink to inspire and hire the best talent is a relative advantage that should grow over time. Next, we'll go in reverse order on this story. First, here's the short tweet response from Elon. He used the 100 emoji, indicating he agrees 100% with the posted article. Fortunately, we read the article so that you don't have to. These comments from Oculus Consulting CTO John Carmack sum up his thoughts well. I really do care about the metaverse, and I buy into the vision, Carmack says, before quickly adding, I have been pretty actively arguing against every single metaverse effort that we have tried to spin up internally in the company from even pre-acquisition times. The reason for that seeming contradiction is a somewhat ironic one, as Carmack puts it. I have pretty good reasons to believe that setting out to build the metaverse is not actually the best way to wind up with the metaverse. He goes on to discuss the importance of caring about the details of the user experience rather than trying to architect and discuss things in abstract terms. Nevertheless, Mark Zuckerberg and the team at Meta are forging ahead with trying to be the platform that the metaverse gets built on. Let's see how this plays out over the next few years and decade. Transitioning to myself and Neuropod, I was recently interviewed by Eliana Sheriff to discuss Neuralink, Neuropod, and YouTube. In addition to being a news reporter, Ellie has a channel that covers news related to Starlink, SpaceX, and various Elon Musk stuff. If you're interested, I encourage you to check out her channel, Ellie in Space, of course, linked in the description. One of the things that she and I chat about is our new Neuropod Tune series, and I'm very excited to share that we just released our second episode. The series, called Neuroverse, is a parody animated cartoon series showcasing our crazy and fantastic future with Neuralink. Our animator, John, has done a great job creating this high-quality series from scratch. It is very cool to see how the character drawings, the voiceovers, the background images, assets, and all the animation tie together. You can imagine how time-consuming it is to do this well for even some scenes that may only be 3-5 to five seconds long. Anyway, I say this from the perspective of awe rather than seeking pity. It's been great to see it come together, and I hope you can all check out the series by searching for Neuropod Tune. 
Although it's a little past Thanksgiving in the United States, there's no better holiday to celebrate year-round, so I wanted to say thank you to all of you who have watched our videos or are supportive in any way. Also, thank you to the Neuropod team members for their contributions. And here's the last sign-off from a special Neuropod Tune team member. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone!